Hello friends! Two years ago I made a dice tour video in which I showed off maybe a dozen dice sets and single dice, which at the time I thought was a lot. Whew. Since then I have gotten so many people asking for a new dice video and let's just say my collection sure hasn't gotten smaller. And the dice I thought were exciting back then pale in comparison to the kinds of dice that I have now. I have custom dice, I have dice in weird shapes, I have dice that light up. You know, why don't I just show you? The thing about being a D&D YouTuber is that even if I wasn't buying dice for myself all the time, which I am, in case y'all were wondering what I spend that YouTube ad money on, I also just end up with a lot of dice that are gifted to me or sent to me for sponsorships. My dice collection has gotten so ridiculous that I don't think I have a single D&D player friend that I haven't forced at least one set of dice on, and a few months ago I actually donated like probably a few hundred dice just because I physically can't use that many dice. So this is gonna be a chill little video, hopefully relaxed and I'll put the name of each dice manufacturer or artist on screen so that you can look them up if you want to get your own set. Let's look at some dice! First up, I want to show you two custom sets by an artist called Bind Rune Dice. He made two sets for me, one for Ashling and one for Cleo. He even named them Ashling's Grove and Cleo's Fancy. Ashling is my warlock druid, I've made a bunch of videos about her, and the Ashling ones have little dried flowers and moss and soil in them, and the D20 actually has the tiniest and like most detailed little skull in it. Cleo was actually my guest character in the podcast Cast Party. Great show, definitely check it out. And then Cleo's are more of like a really cool marbled look with a sort of a milky pink and then some semi-transparent blues and purples. The most interesting thing about these sets is just that the shapes are so unique. They're a little oversized and each set has a D2. This next one actually isn't even sold. It was sent to me as part of the 2020 Wizards of the Coast holiday box. And this is a Swarovski crystal metal D20. It has all these tiny little red crystals on it. When they sent it to me, it came in this little silk bag and it even had like a little card in it that had three or four spare crystals so that if any of the crystals fell off, I could replace them. Although I can see now that I am missing at least three crystals, and I have no idea where that little card went. Honestly, red is not really my color, so Josh uses this, he uses a ton of red dice, and to be honest, I don't think he probably appreciates it as much as he could, but he has never really understood my feelings about dice. <laughs> Okay, we gotta talk about Dispel Dice. They basically set the bar for what I think cool dice are. I, I didn't know that photos of dice could be art until I found the Dispel Dice Instagram. I pledged on Kickstarter for a few sets way back in 2019 when they ran their first Kickstarter. I was backer 189 out of more than 20,000 backers I pledged within minutes of the campaign going live. I genuinely saved up for this Kickstarter. Then at Gen Con this year, I finally got to actually meet Karen, the creator of Dispel Dice, and she was kind enough to gift me more sets. Cloudscape, which is from that original first collection, also a newer one called Fay Water, and a set that isn't even one of the ones she sells, she just thought that I would like it. What? I just still am like a little bit starstruck that like the person who created Dispel Dice even knows who I am. Okay, one of the more ridiculous dice that I own is this solid copper D20 from Shire Post Mint. This thing weighs 1.4 pounds. It is 99.9% .9 pure copper. I feel like you could actually kill someone with this. Fun fact, this company actually mints a ton of badass real metal fantasy coins. We initially got connected because I used to cosplay Arya Stark and they sent me a bunch of faceless man coins. So anytime you see a metal coin in one of my videos, it's almost always those faceless man coins from Shire Post Mint. This thing costs $175. It was gifted to me, thankfully. Believe it or not, this is only like the second biggest flex in this video. Just wait. All right, marketing team. I have 60 to 90 seconds before my next important business call. Give me your elevator pitch for why Dungeon Masters need World Anvil. You first. Okay, as you know, World Anvil is a world building toolkit for writers and world builders. And who needs to keep their world organized more than a DM? They never know what information they'll need. Players might hop on a ship to visit a far off country. They might send a telepathic message to an NPC they met six months ago. My research shows that 64% of DMs- Ugh, numbers, that's enough. You, picture it. 
A golden retriever running across a green field. Behind him, an explosion! Beloved actor Nicolas Cage emerges from the flames drinking a martini. Can we get him, do you think? What does any of this have to do with World Anvil? Why not mention the wiki style articles that you can index and cross link, the interactive nestable maps, support for stat blocks and character sheets? I mean, you're marketing to DMs, right? You haven't even told them that they can run sessions through World Anvil. Sorry, we didn't know she was such a buzzkill when we hired her. <laughs> you don't need Nick Cage to convince people to try World Anvil. A basic membership is free. And I was thinking we could offer them 40% off any annual membership with the code Ginny, which means we can track conversions Jesus, and- you're even putting me to sleep. Yeah, you suck. Get out of my office. Uh, tell Sandra to get Nick Cage on the phone. Ooh, instead of a golden retriever, what if it's a T-Rex? Genius. I'm making you CEO. Sandra? Okay, next are two sets from a brand that used to be called Cozy Gamer and are now called Fennec and Finch. I was looking for tiny mushroom dice for my deep gnome barbarian Penelope, which I found, but while I was on the site, I also saw these dice with tiny koi fish in them. And even though I can't think what I would use them for, I just couldn't resist it. I am such a sucker for cute little inclusions, especially if they make like a little scene. When I was little, I used to lie in bed imagining that you could have like a marble or something that would have have a rainforest in it or a thunderstorm or like part of the ocean. And this is like basically that. It's about as close as I can get to that. Although may I just say the tiny mushroom dice, they roll terribly for me. I don't even use them for Penelope anymore because I couldn't hit anything. While pulling up their site for this video, I noticed that they have started making sharp edge dice, so I'm screwed. I am gonna be back on that site later tonight. Okay, next up is a handmade custom set by Greenleaf Geek. I keep these in one of my Wormwood Elvish vaults because they feel like the most Elvish dice that I own. These are resin dice with real dried moss and tiny little flowers suspended in them. If you turned my aesthetic into a set of dice, they would look like this and they would be named like Dryad's Grove or something like that. They're like if you had a terrarium inside of a die. Next, I have a handful of D6s that have tiny little donuts in them. These are from the Evergreen Borough. They're called Dungeon Donuts. To me, these are like, if Jester was a rogue, this would be her sneak attack damage. A D6 is like really the perfect die for holding an inclusion in it. It's like you can see the thing inside with very minimal distortion. These remind me of just like tiny dollhouse food, which is just so satisfying. I don't have a ton to say about these. I just think that they're adorable. Okay, next are the Eternal Verse Games Potion Dice. So I pledged to this on Kickstarter when there were only three designs. Now they have a full set of seven. Each die looks like a potion bottle, but they're faceted and rollable, obviously. The set I got was D8 and D6 and of course D4. The D4s are my favorite because obviously this is perfect for healing potions. You know, like 99.9% .9 of dice are in the exact same shapes as all of the other dice. So seeing somebody come up with a creative way to have the same number of faces and to have a rollable object that just looks completely different. I don't know, I just love that. Just a, just a little guy, just a tiny little guy. Okay, next I wanna talk about Wild Earth Dice. I actually just did a sponsorship for them on Instagram for their new Cyberpunk Dice collection, but when they sent me those for the sponsorship, they also sent me a bunch from their last collection, the Cosmic Collection, which are all like space inspired. They sent me, I think like six or seven different colors. I forced myself to pick out three to show off in this video. The three I picked out to share are Pillars of Creation. I just love dice with contrasting colors in them. I just feel like not many people do that. Purple Void Vortex. These might be hard for some people to read, but something about this rich green numbering just really enhances these dice for me. And Beyond the Stars, which I know you're not supposed to eat dice, but don't these just look like they would be delicious? Space! Okay, I said the giant copper D20 was not the biggest flex in this video. That's because the biggest flex is these. Pixels electronic dice. I literally can't believe these are real. Like, don't get me wrong, I adore them, but they are so unnecessary. They have these tiny charging cases and they, they light up. They're just, God, we live in the future. I can't believe I'm saying this, but they connect to an app so you can customize the light up pattern. So you can't actually get these right now. They were kickstarted and they've said that they'll open up a pledge manager sometime this year, which means in the next few months. The craziest part is they are completely sealed. Like there's no seams or anything. The electronics for this are just built into a closed die. So cool, but also like who needs this? Who needs this? For those of you who watched my conversations with my dice short 
short series. This is what I was referencing when I did my little LED die character. I just think they're neat. Okay, I gotta talk about Seer Sword again because I just freaking love her dice. First, this lovely pink set called Venus Spell, which is like, these are just the quintessential magical girl dice. Not just the color and just the tiny little twinkly purple glitter in there, but also the font and just the fact that the highest face of every die has these little stars and moons on them. These are just like, like come on, Wisteria would roll these dice. And this beautiful, whoa, this beautiful black and gold set, I actually don't know what they're called, because her shop is shut down right now, so I can't like go look up the name of this set. But they're clear, and then they have this sort of smoky black pigment in them, and then little coppery flakes. The stars and moons on Venus Spell feel very magical girl, but the stars and moons on this set just feel very like occult and witchy. Also, the person behind this dice company is also the person behind the Sina Una campaign setting, which you might have heard of, which is inspired by pre colonial Filipino mythology and culture, which is badass. Finally, we can't end this video without talking about Die Hard Dice at least a little bit because I just have so many Die Hard Dice. Not only because I love them and they have amazing dice, but also they just send me a lot of dice. I won't show you all of them, we would be here all day, but I'll show you some favorites. One of my favorites from them is a set called Prismatic Sunlight. It's a deceptively simple set. It's just like a clear set with some sort of iridescent gold numbering, but the dice themselves are also iridescent. So there are these really soft like pinks and greens when you move them. These dice just like demand to be used for some sort of celestial character. <laughs> Another thing Die Hard does really, really well is metal dice. They have a ton of metal dice. Like this Dracona Embers set, it has this sort of scaly pink and teal. Incidentally, my original brand color. So naturally, I think they look great together. Also, they sell a bunch of single D20s. Now, I love an accent D20. I think it is a great way to add some color to a dice palette without like lugging your entire dice bag to every game. Plus, if you want fancy dice, but you can't afford a full set, usually a single D20 is just a lot cheaper. They have these oversized D20s, like this gold glitter Mythica D20. And I love this one. It's called Dreamscape Nightshade. They have a whole set of these, but it just makes a fantastic accent D20. There are lots of places where you can get a set of acrylic dice for under $20, but there are very few places that give you the variety and creativity of design that Die Hard does at that price point. That's it for today. I have a bunch more dice, of course, but I feel like I've given you a glimpse of the most exciting and unique ones. Since I have so many now, I usually just pick out a few sets to suit the specific character that I'm playing, or if I'm DMing to suit the tone of the overall game. I rarely need more than two or three sets at a time, but I really like choosing those to complement each other and evoke a sort of aesthetic feeling. If you liked any of these sets, I would encourage you to check out the source and pick up your own. There are so many incredibly talented, and creative folks making and designing dice now. I hope you enjoyed this little show and tell because gosh, I sure do enjoy all these cool dice. I've always had a collector personality and there's something really satisfying about these little math jewels. If you want more dice, feel free to check out my first dice tour video where you will see a less intense collection of dice, but presented with some very earnest early dice collector enthusiasm.